Hi, really quickly before we get started, this video was actually originally with the episode 1 analysis, but I realized that I freaking talk so much, so I decided to make it a video of its own. And also, one more thing, I am not an expert in everything. You know, take this information with a grain of salt. This is all just theory, speculation. If I have anything wrong that I say, please let me know. Um, just be nice. This is a nice community where we can all just nerd out and theorize together. Remember, it's just an anime, nothing too serious and yeah let's get started now we're at the point where the opening sequence starts so i just wanted to kind of analyze the opening song as well as the sequence so the opening song i just got rough translations from a fan translation site basically so again take this with a grain of salt but these are like basically direct translations they might not be perfect but i think in my personal opinion it kind of takes the gist of the message i just thought it would be fun to analyze the lyrics a little bit as well as the opening sequence after the opening song is called New Era by Six Tones. Usually in some anime, actually, they have opening songs and ending songs that have nothing to do with the anime, and then they would just like, you know, have like the song for the sequence, just have it on for the anime. But the opening and the ending, I'm pretty sure were made for the show. So I think it's really important to analyze the opening and ending song lyrics just because there might be a few like hidden messages in it. So we start off with the lyrics. <laughs> Let's start running, I'll take you there to the promised place. So then it's like, what's the promised place? This land is like a place that is desired by people and they expect to find happiness and like success and stuff like that. A place where you can live freely. So I would think about the modern era. Is the modern era the promised place that they're talking about? We just came out of the blue, okay, nothing to be afraid of. So coming out of the blue would mean something unexpected, right? And I think that would kind of refer to how the girls met. Like I already watched the second episode, so kind of like spoilers I guess but the way they met kind of just happened it was out of the blue it was not planned it was not expected so do it yourself um, it's up to you it's basically up to the girls to solve the problem we have let's make a new world and changing ways as well as unknown future so it's like those lyrics kind of come in like creating a new world change the world referring to you know the opening of the original Inuyasha but instead of changing the world we're gonna create a new world you know changing ways butterfly effect fixing the past to fix the future for an unknown future Toa is from the future right so it's like she should know the future right but then if she's gonna go to back to the past fix the past the future will be changed right so it's like she really doesn't know the future if she changes the past <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then there's like this random line that goes like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna say, no, 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 to what though? <laughs> Like, refusal to what? And then we go, you're not alone. Let's mark this precious same era together. And then in another translation I was reading, it said, let's engrave. So I think it's like leaving a mark in time. The girls should, you know, do something big to leave their, their footprint in the timeline of time. And then we have another line that goes, don't let go of this hand running through life. And I think that refers to episode two with Toa and Tatsuna running uh, through life or for their life. <laughs> And, you know, they let go of each other's hand and then this whole shebang thing with, with the fire happened. So I think that might be referring to episode 2 with Toa and Tasuna running for their life. So yeah, that's kind of a really quick analysis to the opening lyrics. And we're gonna analyze a little bit of the sequence. So, the sequence. We start off with like pearls coming out water, of like, you know, water with the ripple effect, butterfly effect. Mm -hmm symbolism over there and then we have Kohaku, Hisui, and Kirara. Kohaku and Hisui are all grown up here. We see them in episode 2. We see Toa sitting in class and she stands out very very much and then we have Setsuna looking alert on a tree and then we have Moroha like being like super laid back and I think that's just to show like the little personalities. Toa in the modern era doesn't fit in. She's not really into all these customs and rules and stuff like that. She's just very different and then Setsuna looking very alert. She takes after so she personality I guess like being you know monotone and serious and stuff like that and then we see Moroha being really laid back that's her personality and then we see the white pearl with Toa yellow pearl with Setsuna and then the red pearl with Moroha the pearls are very important so if you guys don't know anything about the pearls basically again with the whole key terms thing that they released they revealed information about the seven pearls but all we know is that they are rainbow colored pearls it's a jewel that enhances the 
magic power of demons and there are seven because you know rainbow right and all we know is that Moroha, Setsuna and Toa have three so I think it's really interesting because like where are the rest where are the other five right but yeah so it's similar to the jewel in a way I guess like a more downgraded version like a single one is like not as strong as a jewel but it's like very similar on the website there's like these elements on the side on the main menu and it has all the seven pearls it was always there since May including the black pearl and the black pearl is from Inuyasha in the original series if you guys remember his eye yeah his eye. Everyone's like kind of trying to figure out what do these pearls mean. People say, oh, I feel, I feel like the gang is trapped inside of the pearls because they must be missing, trapped and locked away somewhere. Or people say that the pearls also have like each individual different types of power. And someone said that they might be representing different elements and stuff like that, which is a cool theory. Well, back then I kind of predicted that it triggered like you know the portal of the time tree portal because Inuyasha's eye pearl the black pearl did create a portal but that's basically the gist of the pearls we don't really know much yet um just that they enhance power of yokai if you guys watch episode two i think the more pearls you have the more power you have and then we have this little cutscene of this woman this man and this little raccoon guy so basically um, the raccoon guy is takichiyo he was already introduced not in the show but like on like the website so Takichiya is basically a friend of Moroha and he works with her as a bounty hunter and then the woman is from the poster like everyone was just like who is this person it's like a child of who right so I think the woman is the same person in the poster and I actually think that this woman might be really significant in the story mainly because she's in the poster with a bunch of the main characters and not even Sota's in the poster so she might have been the one to raise Moroha and train her as well and I think she trained her because it looks like she has a weapon that she carries her around and stuff. So yeah. And then there was like this random man. I think he is Ryu Bei, and he is owner of the bounty shop who hired Takichiyo and Moroha to work for him. I'm just guessing that's him, mainly because Takichiyo is there, and I'm pretty sure that the woman is not an antagonist, just judging by her placement in the poster next to like everyone that you know we already know. I'm just assuming that the woman, Takichiyo, and the man are all bounty hunters. They all work under the same company um, of bounty hunters. Hunters. And then we cut to Inuyasha and Sashomaru, the only OG gang members that like were in the opening aside from Kohaku and Hirata. But I also want to say again, I always thought that they would get new character designs, the whole gang. Then when the trailer came out, I was like, oh, maybe not. But then when I saw the opening sequence, I was like, yo, yo. I feel like Inuyasha is going to get a new outfit mainly because Moroha already confirmed in a past key term that she has the robe of the fire rat, right? So it's like, Inuyasha, you're either walking around naked or you have a new outfit. And I definitely think it's a new outfit because he is hiding behind Sashomaru and we can't see like his whole body and stuff like that. And then we have a scene where Toa and Satsuna are like kind of mirrored. Um, I think it's just to show like, you know, like their sisters or twins, just fraternal twins. And then they have like this whole ha like hand signs scene. It kind of just reminds me of like Naruto and Sasuke. I guess you could say like ninja hand signs <laughs> Really that scene with the hands also remind me of like the come ending, you know Come my way, coming out, can you hear me? That one, that ending It's like a reflection and it's like water And then she puts her hand and it's just like They both show like the ripples of water, right? So it's like, again, the ripples of water, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect It's all symbolism then, lastly, we see the girls fighting a big three-eyed demon. It looks basically just like a evolved root head demon. And then suddenly more demons appear after they defeat that big ass demon. And I think that's just to show that a lot of demons are after the pearls as well, just like how it was after the jewel. And then we see Toa's left eye has a pearl, but, 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 but I know in episode two, it was mainly showing up the eye thing when the portal was triggered. But I think in that scene in the opening, it kind of looked like she was using the pearls power when she was fighting so i think similar to moroha with the whole benny yasha persona her putting on lipstick and then she will transform into the crimson demon benny yasha i think they are able to use the the pearls for extra power or something like that 
that would be sick. And then it ends off with a view of the girls looking over a cliff. And I don't think there's much significance, but it could be a bookend. Like at the end of the series, we will see that scene again. Like, oh, we're done. We found everyone. We're happy and living together. La 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 la. But I, I don't think so. I think it's just like elemental, just for aesthetics. But they can also, also be looking over the edge for Kiki. <laughs> dark joke I'm sorry and then uh, that is just basically the opening sequence now I would love 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 to analyze a little bit of the ending sequence um, I've discovered a lot of stuff I don't know if it's really helpful stuff but it's it's things that's nice to know and also analyzing the lyrics break by Udu which is another ending song that was created for the show it looks like there's a lot of um, little clues and stuff like that take this with a grain of salt this is direct translation so I only kind of got the gist of the message so we start off with in the corner of, of memory the voice still remains but as I was analyzing the song I was like saying hmm is this song in the perspective of Toa Setsuna or Moroha or Toa and Setsuna or just Moroha and I think I think that this song is in the perspective of Moroha so in this corner of memory the voice still remains in Moroha's character description it says that she hardly knows her parents it's not that she doesn't know her parents she just hardly knows them she probably lived with them for a few years and then separation happened because she was so young maybe she forgot a lot about them so because she hardly knows about their parents I think the only thing she might remember is their voices is their voices poor girl poor girl and then we have I don't know the correctness so it's like I don't know what is right and then we have how many times have you regretted it still to the future I believed in beyond the obstacles it's like regretting the past but believing in the future being hopeful for the future even though the past was kind of rough I don't want a fake figure strength to live as it is false masks turn pain into power this is when I kind of realized it might link to Moroha the song might actually be in her perspective because I think in life in general and with especially with a lot of comedians people who are really funny tend to be really sad deep down and I'm not saying like funny people put up a persona but it's like it's it's sometimes it's a mask so if we know Moroha's personality she's really cheeky she's funny she's playful she's always like really happy she's sassy but we all know that she's probably had a tough childhood living alone and if we remember Inuyasha Inuyasha also put up a false persona not really false persona but like he had to act really tough to protect himself and even though he's like really soft and like he has a really big heart in the inside so I think this kind of reflects with both Inyasha and Moroha and this is when I kind of realized that the song was about her so I don't want a fake figure strength to live as it is stacking many false masks and turning pain into power even though she's in pain she's hurting in the inside she decides to turn the pain into strength and into power you know um, and then we have the lines keep in mind flow of time don't lose sight of it so it's like is time running out and then we have the last part not to hurt someone I want to be the strength to cultivate to protect someone and protection was a big theme in Inuyasha as well especially with Sashomaru with Inuyasha it kind of came naturally for him to protect the people he cared about but it was a big thing with Sashomaru but these lines are saying I want the strength to cultivate to protect someone so maybe Moroha is being strong to protect someone or you know to protect herself to protect people around her as well and then we have the last lines here someday someday I kept wishing to a soft world and I think wishing for a soft world would mean that currently you're living in a tough world again I feel so bad for Moroha even though she's like you know she seems fine right she probably had a really tough childhood being separated from you know family being alone growing up alone so she wishes that there is a you know a softer world out there especially because you know growing up in a harsh world in the field Japan alone as a little kid. We, she's probably witnessed a lot of things. It kind of reminds me of uh, Dororo a lot because she also grew up alone as well. She had to fend for herself at a young age and being a young kid living by yourself in the feudal era during the Warring States era probably really tough and really crazy. You've probably seen so much stuff. And then there was like questions. Oh, is Toa gonna stay in the modern era or in the feudal era? Well, I think 
Sotoa is gonna stay in the feudal era. She might miss Sota a lot. I feel so bad. Sota's like, poor Sota. Everyone leaves him. <laughs> Anyways, I think Toa would maybe prefer the feudal era better because she always complains how she doesn't like the customs of the modern era, the rules, not being able to fit in, la la la. She might be able to fit in better in the feudal era. But then again, Inuyasha was saying that there was never a place for half demons, so you had to make a place for yourself. I see a talk with Inuyasha giving advice to the twins um, about fitting in and being yourself. <laughs> uh, I went on a tangent, but... And then in Moroha's character description, it stated that she fit in or she was accustomed to the modern era easily. Like she kind of felt more at ease there than Tsuna and Toa ever did. So I think obviously having being born from Kagome, who is a very modern era girl, um, I think it's in her blood. I don't know if you can carry that through your genes, but in her blood to, you know, feel at ease in the modern era. So even in the Abagun for the episode three, you can see how chill she looked. Like, like she was already like in her pajamas, you know, chilling, hair down. Maybe she's the one who ends up going to the modern era for a softer world, you know? Ending sequence. So we're gonna analyze the visuals for the ending sequence. The sequence and the visuals are really like still stuff, nothing too crazy, like opening. Ending songs tend to be like that anyways. Um, And there's a lot of flower and pattern elements. And then we see the girls chilling and then we suddenly see the, the pearls drop on them. And I think maybe foreshadows that the pearls were given to them, maybe at the same time. I don't know. If you watch the second episode, it kind of seemed like they had it even before the fire. So I really believe that they were trapped inside the pearls, but that might not be the case because I feel like the parents were present during that fire. And I feel like if they had the pearls already, then how can the parents be in the pearls? I don't know, it's a it's a really complex thing. I have to analyze it more, but that's my theories for now. But yeah, it kind of seemed like the pearls were just given to them. Then we get cut to Toa kind of searching for something. She has like her own little sequence of her looking around, searching, and then she suddenly fades into Setsuna, and then the background changes into like a little Setsuna's themed background. And then Setsuna's also looking for something, and then she walks out of screen. And then suddenly the background changes again, and then Moroha just enters enters the scene herself. She just walks in her on her own, no fading or transition to her. She kind of just walks in. She kind of looks expressionless, she sniffs, looks surprised for a second, and then she smiles and runs off. And it's like, who did she smell? Maybe her cousins, or this could be like a bookend to her finding Inuyasha, like when they're already like reunited. I think that also kind of links into with the song as well, like her like expressionless expression, and then her surprise looked and then her smile and then as she runs off. So it's like, again, like, she could be sad. She could be so sad in the inside. Like, I don't know. I feel like she could be sad. I know that scene, that whole scene doesn't seem like much, but I feel like there's so much significance with that. Toa and Tsutsuna were like searching for each other. And then the reason why it faded into each other is because they're like, one and the same, they're look, both looking for the same thing, like something's missing within them. But then Moroha, she has her own story, she's missing her own thing, like her parents. Like, I mean, not that To and Satsuna are missing her parents. And each of their backgrounds has a lot of clues and meaning. Like, design elements have a lot of meaning behind it. So, with Toa's little background, we see a little family crest or mon in um, Japanese. Um, basically, a mon is like a family symbol similar to a last name. It is a symbol that a whole family would have back in like the Edo period. So, usually, a Japanese mon is an abstract geometric shape. It's usually kind of circular, it's symmetric, and monochromatic. Um, I think it was kind of interesting how she's the only one who had a Japanese mon on it. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm so sorry, but I think she, it's kind of interesting how she's the only one who has it. Um, I think it might be the Higurashi crest. Further analyzing it, it is basically a Hanabishi mon, which is a diamond flower. Um, it also has the tortoise shell. And basically, the tortoise shell is usually associated with Shinto and Buddhist faiths and it represents a longevity and this crest is usually popular among samurai families. 
and I really think it might be Higurashi just because the Shinto inflation. You can say that it is Sashomaru's, it's not <laughs> because Sashomaru's is similar but it is a actually a plum blossom but it is a six petal plum blossom usually for Japanese moons. Plum blossoms usually have five petals but I read on a website, I will link all of my links or like all my research stuff in the description so you guys can feel free to read more on it but I read a post or a little forum post saying that a six petal plum blossom was not a thing back then and it was possible that Rumiko just made that for Sashomaru like specifically just for him they kind of do look similar because it does have the plum blossom and the tortoise shell but this one is actually the Hanabishi diamond flower with the tortoise shell so it is not Sashomaru's crest but yeah and her design is really simple and it's like a blue type theme and I totally forgot to talk about the whole wave design but the wave really reminds me of the wave the really famous painting it says that it, it seems to symbolize irresistible force of nature and the weakness of human beings this can represent her half human self and half human self and then let's skip to Tatsuna's little pattern so she has cherry blossoms cherry blossoms basically represent renewal and like fleeting nature of life because they usually bloom during the springtime and then she has like fan designs so we also see a fan in her little design thingy and basically there is various symbolism in Japan associated with fans but the fan itself is a symbol of prosperity and it spreads out when we open it similar to a blooming flower or widening of wealth and I think this kind of just shows that Setsuna might be opening up throughout the series because she's very closed off and anxious looking you know Okay, so for this one, I actually needed help from my mom to tell me what it was, but I'm pretty sure these are carnations, and in Japanese, it represents love, and it's a common gift for Mother's Day. The Mother's Day. <laughs> um, and then purple carnations basically symbolize, like, unpredictability and the lighter hue of a carnation usually comes out with a more positive meaning and could this mother's day connection refer or be hinting to the fact that maybe Setsuna was actually raised by her mother people are speculating that Kohaku was the one who raised Setsuna but I don't think so only because in his character description it only says that because Sashomaru let Kohaku stay with him when he was younger he let Setsuna join them in the demon extermination shop so I I don't know I just personally don't think Kohaku raised Setsuna and Setsuna might be the only one who was raised by a mother or her real mother and just like I said on my other past videos like before because they did state that Sota raised Toa they have no reason not to mention that Kohaku raised Setsuna if he actually did so I just I don't know I just really believe that he never raised Setsuna, I could be wrong, but I always just believed that he didn't. That's all. <laughs> she also has a bird. A bird, right? And I had to look through so many Japanese birds to find the specific bird that would match the like the look, the way it looks. And basically, I found out that it is actually a barn swallow. And it is a widespread species. It is found in Japan. Um, basically, its personality is very territorial. It attacks anyone that goes near its nest. And I think that really reflects Setsuna's personality now. The symbolism behind the bird is spring, summer, elegance, delicacy, meekness, loyalty, fertility, prosperity, sweetness, and yeah. And I think it really suits Setsuna's vibe as well because of her feminine and elegantness similar to Sashomaru. But I think it's really cool to have this like contrast with the personality of the type of bird as well as the symbolism because I think the personality does really match how she is now but the symbolism does really match like you know her true self when she was a kid if you guys watched episode 2. The way she was like really happy and like playing with Toa and everything. So I think that's really cool. And Setsuna has a purple theme. But I really like the whole bird analysis with this whole thing. And then we're gonna skip to Moroha. So Moroha has a lot of stuff going on in hers as well. There is a 14 petal flower, which is the chrysanthemum. And basically the chrysanthemum in Japan, it's also linked to the imperial seal of Japan, or the chrysanthemum seal. It's usually seen with yellow petals with a black outline, but here it is like not yellow, it's like red. But basically the 14 petal flower, the chrysanthemum, represents 
represents Japan, signifies longevity, rejuvenation, nobility. It also represents autumn, the harvest, and goodness. You also see the Japanese maple, and Japanese maple represents balance, practicality, calmness, and rest, which is also contrast with Moroha because Moroha is very cheeky. And then Japanese maple is like calmness, fall, chill, you know? We also see the tamari ball or the handball. It has a lot of significance with Inuyasha because Inuyasha, remember if you guys remember his like little flashbacks of when he was a kid with his mother, he would play with the tamari ball or he would want to play with other people, but people would ignore him because he's half demon. So I think this kind of shows like the symbolism within the show. Maybe Moroha just didn't really fit in either in her world, you know? If you don't know what a tamari ball is, it's basically like folk art in Japan. It originated in China and it is basically a ball made out of embroidery or like string basically. And you can also play with the ball and that is what we see with um, Inuyasha as well. And we also see like a little ribbon in the background. Um, and I would like to think that would represent the red string of fate. And that was a big thing in Inuyasha as well with Kagome and Inuyasha's relationship. The red string of fate is basically a folk tale saying that you're connected with a red string of fate you're destined to follow it whatever your destiny that's your destiny and in the story of Inuyasha and Kagome they had their red string of fate together and they were destined to meet each other they're destined to work together fall in love and spend their life together forever and that's what the red string of fate in their story represents and it's cute to see that in Moroha's real, like little background detail and we also see cherry blossoms again Oh, again, also with the tamari ball though. If you guys remember the little title screen sequence that go like dun dun. We can see the pattern again with the tortoise shell as well, represent longevity. And we can also see like the little tamari balls in the background as well. After that little sequence, we, we go into like this little cute scene of little still pictures of them. And then we see like these like little decorations, like with like these little patterny things. And I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about, that scene. Last year in my design class, I actually studied a little bit about Japanese motifs, Japanese patterns and stuff like that. Cause we had to make our own patterns in um, our design class. So I learned a little bit about the traditional patterns and the significance of them. And I remember seeing this sequence for the first time and then the second time I watched it and the third time I watched it, I was like, all of these symbols look so familiar. Where have I seen these before, you know? And then I realized I've seen this in school. So basically, this whole scene has a lot of little like easter eggs there are these really specific japanese patterns in japan that are used a lot a lot of like significance on like for the kimonos for patterns on silk paper and stuff like that but the one in the background in the scene if you see like the white background and there's like this little pattern here that actually is a hemp leaf pattern so hemp leaf pattern is basically inspired by hemp leaves and hemp leaves are a type of plant that grows without much care and this pattern is usually used on children and baby's kimonos basically just so they can like you know grow strong and healthy and i think again this is hinting to moroha again because you know growing up alone with not much care but then we see her all grown up being 14 she's really strong she is healthy so i think again this whole ending sequence is a mostly about her you know not that the whole hemp leaf thing can also tie in with toa and satsuna maybe satsuna we don't really know much about satsuna but maybe satsuna also also grew up independently, but I know Towa was really cared for by um, Dota. But I really think that that was kind of symbolizing towards Moroha. And then also, 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 there are little like these like little circle decorative elements. I'm like, I've seen these before. Again, Japanese crests or mon, right? Mon. There are multiple ones that come up, and two of them I have no idea. Like I couldn't find any information on them. Um, so if you guys have any ideas, I would love to know. But there are three that I kind of was able to identify to whose family these like belong to i'm not really sure but i was able to find a little bit of significance and meaning behind them a little background with designing the motifs motifs are usually simple monochromatic they're abstract they are symmetrical usually circular in a way they usually are really simplified designs from real life objects so the the spinny one i don't really know what to call it but the spinny one that one like stood out to me the most because like i think that's the one i remember the most that one is actually inspired by military implements and it actually is inspired by an arm guard that is used when shooting a bow hmm. Hmm. 
Because who else used a bow in the show? Ha 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 ha. And then next, we have multiple ones, like multiple flower ones that come up in this background. So we have like this really swirly flower one, and then we have like this regular flower one with uh, multiple petals in the back, and we also have like this regular flower one. But they're all, I believe, plum, plum, plum blossoms because they're five petals. They're all round in shape. So not to be mistaken by like sakura petals or flowers and they represent perseverance, hope, beauty, purity, and transitions of life. And I think transitions of life is a big hint here because the girls are transitioning to finding more about themselves and their past. And then the last one that I kind of realized, found out about, this could be a stretch, but this one kind of just looked the most similar. And then when I read the caption for this specific motif, or mon, I was like, bro, this has to be it, you know? This has to be it. The square one, I associated it with this little diagonal hashtag type design. And then it said, the top edge of a well surrounded by trees. Bro, bro, this is way too specific, you know? This is way too specific not to be the well. So I'm, I, I, I really think this is the well. I really hope so. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry guys, but I'm just suspecting it. And we also see like little hints. This hint is mainly for people who don't know that there are seven pearls, but there are like little pearls in the background as well on like the string thingies that the little motifs attach onto. But yeah, so that is my analog. Oh analysis the opening and the ending i really hope i made sense when i'm explaining these i really hope so i hope i made sense throughout this video i hope you guys found this helpful i will try my best to analyze episode two soon and episode three um, i'm pretty sure it's not gonna be as complex as this one because i already covered the opening and ending songs which had a lot of information i think that's all check out my reaction videos they're really fun check out my other ayasha hime news updates and stuff like that just so you know it will help you understand the show more better i guess you could say because like i understand it clearly because i i've been learning about the show since may but you know for someone who is new to the show you probably are like hella confused because um you know you have to learn the, the information later on yeah i mean it's cool if you don't want spoilers but i want to know i want to know i hope you guys found this video helpful and i hope you guys found it interesting as well remember theories are just theories opinions are just opinions to each their own guys just be respectful with one another thank you for 10,000 subscribers <gasps> crazy um and yeah make sure to subscribe for more yashihime and inuyasha and anime content in the future and the weekly community tab post for discussions for the episode so we can all just interact with each other um have a good time share our ideas Yes. Follow my Twitter, Instagram, and yeah, that's all I gotta say for today. And I would like to see you guys next time. I'm like asleep, half asleep. Um, but yeah, I would like to see you guys next time. Bye bye.